Hello, I'm Namrata Krishnan, a nephrologist at the Yale School of Medicine and VA Medical Center in Connecticut. In this video today, we will describe risk factors and predictors of progression of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD. We will also discuss tools to identify rapid progressors with ADPKD. Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD, is a multi-system genetic disease that affects one in every 400 to 1,000 live births worldwide. It occurs equally in men and women and is the most common single gene cause of chronic kidney disease, or CKD, leading to end-stage kidney disease, or ESKD. It occurs in all ethnicities. Kidneys in ADPKD develop numerous fluid-filled cysts that enlarge over time. As cysts develop and enlarge, they cause compression and architectural distortion of normal kidney tissue due to inflammation, neovascularization, and fibrosis. This eventually leads to a reduction in healthy kidney tissue and a progressive decline in renal function, or GFR. By age 60, half of the patients with ADPKD may develop ESKD. ADPKD is the fourth most common cause of ESKD worldwide. In general, however, ADPKD has great phenotypic variability in terms of disease severity, even within families. During the course of the disease, patients may develop other complications such as hematuria, flank pain, worsening hypertension, cyst rupture, infection, proteinuria, kidney stones, and urinary concentrating defects. Extra renal manifestations such as liver cysts and rarely intracranial aneurysms can be seen as well. Once a diagnosis of ADPKD is made, the next important clinical question that one must try and answer is how quickly might the patient progress to ESKD? That is, is the patient a slow or rapid progressor? This information has important prognostic and therapeutic implications as there are now available treatments for those with evidence of rapid progression. In addition, risk stratification is important for clinical trial design to select participants most likely to benefit from interventions that slow progression. There are numerous factors that have been implicated to affect disease course in ADPKD. Genetics and environmental risk factors affect disease severity. In addition, clinical, imaging, and laboratory parameters can be helpful biomarkers to assess disease severity and predict clinical prognosis. The most validated predictors of progression in ADPKD include PKD1 mutation, male sex, early onset of hypertension, cyst complications, elevated total kidney volume, or TKV, and early loss of GFR. Let's discuss genetics and total kidney volume in more detail. ADPKD occurs due to mutations of two main causative genes, PKD1 on chromosome 16, which encodes for polycystin 1 protein, and PKD2 on chromosome 4, which encodes polycystin 2. PKD1 mutations can be non-truncating or truncating. A truncating mutation is one that results in a non-functioning protein. The latter accounts for about 65% of all PKD1 mutations. PKD1 gene mutation is more common and accounts for about 78% of the families with ADPKD. PKD2 accounts for about 15%. In about 7% of the families, neither mutation can be found, noted as NMD. Clinically, PKD1 is more severe than PKD2, and truncating PKD1 mutations generally have the worst prognosis, although exceptions to this have been reported. Renal survival is lowest with PKD1 truncating mutations. The median age of onset of end-stage kidney disease at 55 years, and best with PKD2 mutations with onset of ESKD at around 79 years. You should note that there are several other mutations that can affect PKD1 protein levels, resulting in kidney and liver cysts, but these do not typically lead to ESKD due to PKD as shown in the blue box. Here's a link if you want to learn more. Now let's discuss total kidney volume, or TKV. TKV is an important predictor of progression, especially in earlier stages of ADPKD, where a normal creatinine can be falsely reassuring. 
TKV provides individualized information about each patient's unique rate of kidney growth. Adjusted for patient height, it is expressed in milliliters per meter. In general, a higher TKV at a younger age suggests a worse prognosis, a higher kidney cyst burden, more severe PKD mutation, and faster rate of kidney function decline. Patients with high kidney volumes may be suitable candidates for clinical trials and may benefit from disease-modifying therapy. Total kidney volume can be estimated by utilizing the ellipsoid formula using the length, width, and depth of the kidneys. Using CT or MRI images, the length is measured in sagittal and coronal views, and an average is calculated. The width and depth are measured using axial transverse images at the hilar level. These values can be inserted into online TKV calculators to then determine average left and right kidney volumes. A normal TKV is about 250 to 350 milliliters. For example, a 45-year-old male with the following kidney dimensions determined using CT images has a calculated total kidney volume of 1630 milliliters and a height-adjusted total kidney volume of 906 milliliters per meter. Based on some of the established risk factors that we discussed earlier in this video, there are now two main scoring systems used as clinical and research tools to evaluate risk of progression in ADPKD, the Pro-PKD Scoring System and the Mayo Scoring System. The Pro-PKD Scoring System is a risk stratification score based on a large French registry of more than 1,300 patients enriched with older patients and those with ESKD and incorporates genetic and clinical data. The Pro-PKD gives higher points to male sex, early onset of hypertension before the age of 35, early occurrence of a urologic event, and PKD1 mutation. PKD1 non-truncating mutation gets a score of 2, while a truncating mutation gets a score of 4. A final score between 1 to 3 is considered low risk, 4 to 6 moderate risk, and 7 to 9 high risk for progression to ESKD. The median age at onset of ESKD in the groups is 71, 57, and 49 years, respectively. The applicability of pro-PKD score is limited in young patients without hypertension or a history of a urologic complication, as well as in patients that do not have a PKD1 or 2 mutation. It requires genetic testing, which may not always be available. Now let's move on to the Mayo classification, which is another useful research and clinical tool to identify patients at high risk of disease progression. It mainly applies to those with class 1 typical ADPKD, that is those with diffuse distribution of cysts throughout the kidney. It does not apply to atypical ADPKD seen in about 5% of the patients with asymmetrical or unilateral cyst distribution. The Mayo scoring system uses information such as imaging-based kidney dimensions, patient's height and age, and computes TKV and height-adjusted TKV to determine risk groups 1A through E. It also makes predictions about future kidney function decline or EGFR trends. Based on the patient age at the time of imaging and height-adjusted TKV, the Mayo classification divides patients with class 1 ADPKD into risk groups A through E. Patients are classified as slow progressors, or 1A, with an expected annual kidney growth rate of less than 1.5%, intermediate progressors, or 1B, and rapid progressors, 1C through 1E, with expected annual kidney growth rate of upwards of 3%. For example, at a height-adjusted TKV of 600 milliliters per meter, a 20-year-old would fall into class 1E, whereas a 60-year-old would be in the 1B category. Our 45-year-old patient with a height-adjusted TKV of 905.8 milliliters per meter falls into Mayo classification 1C. This classification can be used to estimate the slope of kidney function decline, Compared to normal healthy subjects, 1A demonstrating the slowest EGFR decline, while 1E showing rapid decline. The probability of ESKD at 10 years based on this model for class 1A is about 2.4% and for class 1E is about 67%. It's important to note that the long-term trajectory of GFR decline in ADPKD is nonlinear with an initial period of stability 
followed by a sharp decline. The difference between classes is mostly due to age, at which decline begins, beginning at a younger age for class 1e and an older age for class 1a. Once the sharp decline sets in, however, the rate is fairly constant between classes and averages 5 to 6 mils per minute per year. When Mayo classification is combined with genetic analysis, it strongly predicts the shape and slope of GFR decline. In summary, ADPKD is the fourth leading cause of ESKD and the most common genetic cause of CKD worldwide. Age, height, adjusted, elevated total kidney volume, and PKD1 truncating mutation are strong predictors of progression to ESKD. Irrespective of the genetic mutation, a young patient with a high, height-adjusted TKV is at a higher risk of progression. There are two main scoring systems in ADPKD that are helpful tools to identify rapid progressors, Pro-PKD score and Mayo scoring system. The Pro-PKD score is based on genetic analysis. The Mayo scoring system is based on imaging classification. Rapid progressors may be candidates for disease-modifying therapy. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Here is a list of suggested readings for your reference.